What is up, everybody, and welcome back to another video. In today's video, we are going to be talking about Detroit Lions defensive lineman Deshaun Hand that will be basically returning for 2020 and could have a huge impact that a lot of people are overlooking. This is kind of sparked by a post that I saw on Twitter, and also someone else brought it up in the community, so I thought, hey, it's perfect timing to do this video. Let's get it started. Welcome everybody to another video. Glad you guys are here. Today, we have a pretty entertaining episode, but before we get into anything, we have to go check out the whiteboard worthy comment of the day. This one comes from my guy, Dr. Detroit, who says this. Now, I just took a sentence from his entire comment. He said, rewatch the first four games of the 2019 NFL season. The team is playing as a team. He's talking about, of course, the Detroit Lions. And this kind of went off the last video that I did where I was discussing, you know, how the first four games, the Lions, sure, they weren't the best team in the league, but they were playing really well and they were very competitive against some good teams. They were beating good teams. And I think a lot of it had to do with that team chemistry that, you know, gets easily overlooked on how important that actually is. Players buying into the season, players wanting to play for each other. And then obviously everything kind of just went downhill, right? Snacks didn't play well. Darius Slay had his best friend or one of his best friends trading in Quandre Diggs, which made him upset. You lost a veteran in the back end. Matthew Stafford gets injured. It was a complete domino effect. And all of a sudden, the Lions season just went like this, okay? There was a lot of factors, but that is a huge factor. It just went like this as a whole. Dr. Detroit brings it up, and I have to give a huge shout out to my guy, Dr. Detroit. So he is on the whiteboard today with the whiteboard com worthy comment of the day. Now, it actually is of the video, but it just sounds cooler when I say of the day. It sounds like it rhymes. Well, it does rhyme, but it sounds cooler like that. So let's hop into today's video. We're going to be discussing that Sean Hanley played in three games last season for the Detroit. Lines. And we've kind of started a mini series where we're talking about Imani, Austin Bryant, Will Harris, TJ Hawkinson. These players drafted last year, not this year, but drafted last year that are easily overlooked. But those are the guys that could really take a big step. Those are the guys that you don't want to forget about just because of this year's offseason. But I think I'm going to throw kind of Deshaun Hand into that mix. And yes, I know he was not drafted last season. He was here in 2019 and in 2018. But I'm going to throw him into this mix because in 2018, he barely played in the season. He only played in three games. Let me just say it was basically a wash of the season. But in 2018, when he played in a lot more games, he had a lot more on the field playing time as a rookie. The guy was so good. He was such a good player for the Detroit Lions, and he was huge for that defensive line. He was a big reason the Lions were able to get so many more sacks, 43 sacks on the season. And their defense wasn't great, but Deshaun Hand was a huge, huge part of that defensive line. And I think he helped a lot of other players like Romeo Hora, even Snacks Harrison a little bit. Snacks Harrison, who was really bad last season, I think Snacks just didn't play well on his own, but also Deshaun Hand, I think, helped him out a lot. 2018, Deshaun Hand was really, really good. He made the pro football focus all rookie team. And today's the I'm going to be discussing his strengths and weaknesses, things that I think he could improve on because the guy, obviously he's still a very, very young player and what kind of big impact he could have on the Detroit Lions for next season. So let's talk about it. Back and look at his 2018 season. How good actually was Deshaun Ham by the numbers in 2018? Well, Pro Football Focus in 2018 ranked him as the 15th best player at his position out of 112 players. The 15th best as a rookie. That's not 15th best of rookies. That's 15th best best of everybody that played his position basically as a defensive tackle, but we know in the line scheme, it's a little bit different, but basically as a defensive tackle slash defensive end, Deshaun Hand was graded out very, very highly. He was given an 85.2 overall, a 77.6 against the run, 79.5 in pass run, 17 solo tackles, three sacks, two forced fumbles, and five and 455 snaps. He made the PFF all rookie team, as I mentioned, he had 25 quarterback pressures, 18 defensive stops, and in those 18 defensive stops, he did not miss a single tackle. The guy was a beast, and he was only a rookie. This was only a rookie. Year one for Deshaun Hand, and he was this great. Now, like I said, last year was kind of a wash of the season. He missed most of the season due to injuries, so we really didn't get to see anything of Deshaun Hand, and that kind of leads us, a lot of fans, of a lot of us fans, to kind of forgetting Deshaun Hand and forgetting how big of an impact he had in 2018 and how big of an impact he can have in 2020. I think the Lions are really banking that he will bounce back in 2020 and have a big year for the Detroit Lions coming off of that injury, because if he plays like he did in 2018, the Lions defensive line is going to get much, much better. What I think Deshaun Hand did well in 2018 and what I necessarily don't think he did too well. Maybe things that he could improve upon to get better in this Detroit Lions defense. But again, I said 2018, not 2019, because 2019, he played in literally three games. He just didn't look like the same players. I don't know if he was ever completely healthy. He was kind of just forced into that. He just didn't look right, okay? 2019 to me was kind of a wash of a season. But 2018, like we looked at the grades, he was incredible. So let's look at the strengths and weaknesses, things on the field that he did 
did well. Let's start off with the things that I believe he did well as a player for the Detroit Lions and that he's going to bring back in 2020 because you don't want to forget about this guy. He's going to have a huge impact on this defensive line. Starting with the strength, the first thing is his upper body push. A lot of times you look at those big guys on the defensive line, you talk about their lower body, that great push that they get off of the ground. But when I look at a guy like Deshaun Hand, I see that upper body push, okay? I see his strong upper body, especially in his shoulders, his ability to use that muscle and that strength to get by an offensive lineman. Now, sure, you're not always able to just run right past an offensive lineman, and we'll talk about that in a second with his pass rushing. But what he does do well is he's able to basically cut an offensive lineman in half with that strength of his upper body, kind of able to put them out, push them out of the way, use that leverage to help in the run game. That is where he was huge for the Detroit Lions. And I know Snacks Harrison struggled last year, and I think a lot of it had to do with he just struggled as a player. But I think Deshaun Hand really did help Snacks Harrison. I really do. I think Deshaun Hand opened a lot of players up in 2018. And let me just say one thing. I miss Ziggy Ansa. I really like Ziggy Ansa. But Ziggy Ansa was opened up a ton by Deshaun Hand. They were able to get a lot of one-on-ones because Deshaun Hand was forced into tons of double teams. He was a guy that you basically had to double team in the inside, especially on rushing plays. Basically blow them up. He would blow up rushing plays. And that's where he had a huge impact in 2018. And that's where he'll have a huge impact in 2020 if he can be healthy. The thing that I love about Deshaun Hand is his ability to finish off a play. Now, I'm going to say this right now. I don't think Deshaun Hand is anywhere near an elite pass rusher. I just don't see it. Even out of an interior defense lineman, I don't see him as an, an elite pass rusher. Yes, he grades out well. I just don't necessarily see it, okay? He lacks a lot of pass rush move. He's not very consistent off the snap. I don't see him as anywhere near an elite or maybe even a great pass rusher. But where I think he thrives is not finishing on plays, not giving up on a play. He will continue to come at you and come at you and come at you. You can push him to the ground, okay? You can make him have to get back up. You could double team him. He's not going to give up on the play until the whistle blows. So if a quarterback has to hold on the ball any bit too long, which is the Lions kind of strategy, what it's been for the last two years, trying to use that coverage to have the quarterback hold on to the football too long, Deshaun Hamm will continue to make his way towards you. And a lot of the sacks and pressures come that way is because he's continuing to keep coming. Even in a run play, he's going to keep coming and coming and he's going to try to make a pursuit angle to get to the running back. He just won't give up on plays. And that's just the mental thing that you saw with him back in 2018. That's just that hunger, okay? That's the drive that he had. And if he can bring that into 2020 with him, he is going to be fantastic. And he's going to make this defensive line look much, much better. He's a guy that you don't want to forget about because of the injuries. He is very talented when he is healthy. Now, his reach is great as well. Run stopping is where I think he definitely thrives as a defensive lineman. As a defensive player, he thrives. He has the versatility and athleticism to move across the entire defensive line. When it comes to run stuffing and run stopping, that's where I think he thrives. And that's where I think he makes a lot of players look much better. See, in run stopping, yes, he's not able to get by every single offensive lineman. But what you have to be able to do is make plays while you're engaged by an offensive line, while you're engaged by a blocker. And that's what you see with the Sean Hand. His reach, his length with his arms, that athleticism to kind of get off of an offensive lineman and make a play, almost make a play with one arm. That's what Deshaun Hand can bring to the table. And you see it multiple times on film, okay? That's what you just see when you watch him play. He's able to do that. He's engaged, and he's still able to make a play on the football. Now, of course, you want to just get off the offensive lineman. That way, you're free to make a tackle, but that rarely happens. He is able to make tackles while he's engaged, which some players struggle with. Some players are not able to get off of that offensive lineman. Some players are kind of stuck there, and they're not able to do anything, and that's where you see these big gaps, these big holes, and that's where you see running backs just running through when they're not even touched. But if Sean Hand is able to clog those lanes with his length, his arms, his reach to get out there and make a play to at least make the running back go a different way with the football. When it comes to pass rushing, I think he's a very inconsistent pass rusher. I don't see him as a good, as a great pass rusher. I don't see him anywhere near an elite pass rusher. That's just not what he is. That's not who he is as a player. Sure, he graded out well, but as I mentioned, I think a lot of his pressure came from quarterbacks holding on to the ball too long. He's very inconsistent off of the snap in terms of timing a snap up. When he does time a snap up, this guy is scary because when he times the snap up on the, on the defensive line position, wherever he is, you'll see it a few times. The guy is in the backfield like that. I mean, he is quick and he's got the strength. He's got the power. He's got the upper body strength to get back there quickly and disrupt some plays. So when he jumps the snap, whether it's in a run or a pass play, you got a problem offensively, but he does that inconsistently. But I think that will come with time. I think he'll improve upon that. And as he continues to get better, like you see some of the best edge rushers, you see some of the best offensive tackles, they're really good right off the snap to be first ones to move. If he continues to improve that as Deshaun Hand makes that more consistent, he's going to be a problem for offensive line because a lot of it has to do with that 
first initial step, how quick are you off the ball? He wasn't very quick previously. It was very inconsistent, but those flashes that he did show that quickness, Roy, a lot of stretch run plays. He's able to clog the lanes with that length, with that athleticism to take away a lot of stretch plays. And teams love to utilize that, utilize their speed, their athleticism of their offensive line. But this is kind of what the Lions had to throw back at them as kind of a counterattack is their Deshaun Hand because he's that athletic defensive tackle. He's got the size, but he also has that athleticism, right? Danny Sean doesn't have any crazy athleticism. Deshaun Hand does. And that's what they're kind of able to just kind of throw out there defensively and say, hey, this is kind of our guy. That's our guy to kind of take that away. That way offenses can't just continue to utilize that because in the Lions defense, you got all these big run stoppers who aren't that athletic. Deshaun Hand gives you a mix of both, which is great. I see a little bit of that in Nick Williams. Also definitely in Jay Sean Cornell as well, but definitely Deshaun Hand, okay? That's what he brings to the table with his size. And again, he has the versatility to line up at any position on the defensive line. He'll play nose tackle. He can get into three technique. You can put him anywhere you want. You can put this guy in a two-point stance on the outside of a tackle. You can line him up anywhere you want on the defensive line with that athleticism and versatility. The other thing that I saw about him is when I was talking about Jason Cornell, what he did in college and what scouts look for in defensive linemen is the play recognition, right? The read and react. If you guys remember, we talked about screens, for example, were a huge thing to look at, huge plays to take notes. How well does a player read and react on the spot? For example, if it's a screenplay, what are they doing? Are they continuing to just go to the quarterback and, you know, not even sure that it's a screenplay? They don't even know it's a screenplay and they think, hey, man, I'm just getting right to the quarterback. This is great. But in reality, that's kind of what the offense is trying to do. Are they jumping into the passing lanes? Are they dropping out to help and make a tackle? That's what Deshaun Hand did. And while he didn't do it perfectly, I saw this. The first screenplay I saw him go against, he did it very well. Okay, he was a smart player. And I don't think he perfected it. And I don't think it was the best technique, I would say, to go about combating a screenplay. But what he did do was at least understand that it was a screen and he didn't continue to just rush the quarterback. He started for a second, backed up, and then got back. And while he wasn't necessarily able to make a play on the ball, you could see that that awareness is what's very important. And that's what the Lions saw out of him back in Alabama is that awareness as a player as a defensive lineman. That's the read and react that scouts look for. And I saw that with the Sean Hand. I was like, okay, I can see he's a smart player. He his weaknesses or things that I think he could improve upon, or maybe he can improve upon, just things that you kind of have to deal with with him as a defensive lineman. The first thing is his speed off the edge. He's not an elite pass rusher. All right, he's not Zedarius Smith. He's not Trey Flowers. He's not going to run through people. He's not Ziggy Johnson with healthy. That's not what he is. All right, he has enough athleticism to play different spots, but he's not giving you crazy speed off the edge, okay? He's not going to be blowing by offensive tackles or tight ends or anything like that. Even in the inside, he's not making any crazy great pass rush moves. And by the way, Trey Flowers is a monster. He's not Trey Flowers in the pass rush game. That is not his specialty. That's not his thing. He's a run stopper with enough athleticism and heart and drive to continue to work his way to the quarterback and make plays. That's where his stat sacks shows up on the stat sheet. One thing that I do think that he can work on as a player, and this is more with consistency, is leverage. See, when he's able to stay low, he's able to make a lot of plays in run game and the pass game. It's when he gets high and he kind of gets stuck there, and then all of a sudden you don't see him doing anything in the pass game. It's because of the leverage. It's right off the snap. You have to be the lowest man. Sometimes he's not low. Sometimes he gets up too high. Sometimes he's up there and he's kind of just left out to dry and he's not making any plays. And then he's just completely relying upon the quarterback to basically run his way. That way he can make a play on the football in passing plays. He was the guy to get a lot of double teams. He got tons of double teams last season. And like I'd say in, in 2018, like I said, that I think helped a lot of players like Snacks a little bit. I think it definitely helped Romeo putting up some really great numbers. And again, he wasn't here when Trey Flowers playing well. So here's the thing that we got to remember, guys. Trey Flowers was here last season. He wasn't working with a Snacks that was playing as the best run stopper in the league. He was working with a Snacks that was ranked as the 65th best. He wasn't playing with a healthy Deshaun Hand that was doing this. He was playing with a Deshaun Hand that played in three games that was never really completely healthy. You put the, you put Trey Flowers with a healthy Danny Shelton and a healthy Nick Williams and a healthy Deshaun Hand, you are going to have problems in the offensive line. This is what people are overlooking a little bit. Scheme is very important, but also health. If the Lions can be healthy and put these guys with Trey Flowers, Trey Flowers is already an animal, and you can see when you watch him, okay? Offensive linemen have to adjust their game to how they play him because he will eat. But you get him with some of these other guys. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Trey Flowers, he could hit double-digit sacks. You're going to see guys surprise you. Julian O'Quarters are going to surprise you with the sack numbers because he's going to open up a lot of players. Jamie Collins. He's going to open up possibly Jared Davis. He does need to develop kind of a rip move, something like that. You know, his counterattack when it comes to pass rushing, I feel like his counter moves aren't the best. I think he could develop a couple more pass rushing moves, a couple more pass rushing techniques. Definitely in the counter, though, because his first strike isn't always successful, not usually successful. Developing a counter move against that would be great. 
great. But I think if he developed kind of like a rip move and they kind of worked with him with that, I think he'd be really good because I feel like that he tries to do it sometimes. He's just not very consistent with it. But if he could improve that to his game, the ways that he likes to get to the quarterback, just his technique on his own, that would make him very, very good. And I think that would immediately make him a way better pass rusher. So those are just kind of my some, some of my takeaways from Deshaun Hand. If Deshaun Hand plays like he did in 2018 or even plays near that level, we're going to see a defense line get much better overnight. Then it's going to be like, wait, where did this come from? Well, it came from short lines getting these players back and healthy. The Lions have a lot of question marks, and they have a lot of guys that haven't played together. Trey Flowers, Deshaun Hand, Danny Schoen. These guys, if you get these guys healthy together, this defensive line is going to take strides like crazy. And that Trey Flowers that we started to see near the end of the season that was racking up all those sacks, you're going to see that a full season. He was getting pressure early, okay? I watched the games back. This guy was getting pressure early in the season. But if you put him with these guys that are healthy, he's going to look even better. He's going to look like that $90 million man to everybody, okay? It's going to show up on the stat sheet. And for Deshaun Hand, he's going to put up his numbers because you can see it mentally. His drive, his hunger is what makes him so great in the NFL. That run stopping and athleticism and play all over a defense line is what can make him great in the NFL. I'm excited to see what Deshaun Hand can do. Let me know your thoughts, comments below. Thank you, Pat, for watching. I hope I can see you there today, 4 p.m. Eastern time for the Fan to Fan Network world premiere. It's going to be on Twitch. So go to Twitch, Fan to Fan Network, and you guys will see us there. Thank you, Pat, for watching, and I'm out. Or FTFN. FTFN is what it's short for, and I'm out.